I started to get excited about this longevity thing, you know, how to live long and happy when I got my hands on this documentary called The Blue Zones. On The Blue Zones, they have these common things, the common traits, like they all do the same things. Now here is the dilemma, the problem. Not all of us have the luxury to move to these regions. How many of us can actually just up and go? <laughs> Not many of us. I have figured out how to build my own blue zone in my own life. And I'm gonna teach you how to build your blue zone in your life. As soon as you finish this video, you will have all the tools you need to build your blue zone and live to 100, happy and healthy. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about four things. The reason why I decided to focus on four is because it's simple enough for you to design your own four areas. And the first two, anyone can do it. The two first areas are what you eat and how you move. The research on the Blue Zone shows that their diet in most of these places is 80% plant-based. Am I telling you to become a vegetarian? No. <laughs> Am I telling you to become vegan? Hell no. What I'm telling you is that they have a variety on their plate. One of the things that fascinates me about the Blue Zones, it connects with what I do, is that the first region they researched is this city in Japan called Okinawa. Okinawa is the same place where the Ikigai concepts came from. In Okinawa, they have this saying that they teach the kids to eat up to 80% of their capacity. No one is eating until they're full. And in their plate, there is a variety of things. You know, there might be fish, might be meat once a week or twice a week. There's a lot of beans. Beans is the main thing in the diet. And there's a lot of vegetables. So they, they are 80% plant. Based. So maybe you want to have a look at your diet and not only what you eat, but how you eat. You know, you don't have to eat the fullest every single day. And to be honest, I've been trying this in my own life. You don't have to eat five times a day. Who told you that? You can eat twice a day, maybe once a day. What they do in Japan, for example, they wake up and they have a heavy carb in the morning. And then throughout the day, they ease out. And when they get to the night, they have a light meal and most of the times they will drink some wine or they drink some specific tea and you know they attribute their longevity to how they eat and what they eat. Do you want to see an element of the blue zone? This is it. Fresh, green, colorful. This is what belongs to your plate. You shouldn't need anybody to tell you what organic food looks like. You should be able to recognize it. So there it is. The second one is how you move. You know, like a lot of people think that you need to exercise. You know, like, oh, you know, I've got to go to the gym. I'll tell you what, like, I, if you see me limping, I was in jujitsu this morning. But like, I, every now and again when I go to jujitsu, I come back with a limp. Or I, this is, I'm, I'm injured. But you don't have to go to the gym. Like, look, look at this. If you literally, my wife and I, we're doing this now. Twice a week, we bike to wherever we work. So that's exercise. You can literally in bed exercise in your own life. Most of these guys in, in Okinawa or Sardinia or Costa Rica, most of them, they're not counting their steps. You know how we have these gadgets and we count our steps and they, like, they're not doing that. They're not trying. It's just common sense. You don't need to count your steps. They're not worried about the next pill or stem cells or the next hack or the latest podcast on how to live long. They, they're not worried about that. They just do. They just live. They just are and maybe that's what's missing in our lives if you can incorporate physical exercise in your in, in your own routine day to day you know they say um dan butner says that the best thing you could do is to get a dog get a dog why because the dog needs to be walked every day and if you walk the dog guess who else has been walked you're walking it's just common sense eat well eat good and exercise. These are the first two areas of your life out of the four that I want to highlight that you can manufacture. You know, it's, it's not in vain that the, you know, the food companies and, and all of these businesses, they are trying to advertise to us, they're trying to sell to us because you can, you can manufacture that. You can literally build that into your life. Now, the other two areas is what Dan Buettner says that the marketers, the advertisers, they can't make money with that. The third area is your circle, your network. Let's go talk about that. The third area that you want to focus on to build your own blue zone is your circle, your network, your friends. I actually have a video, you can watch this video over here, about the seasons of life and the people 
in it. Your friends are really important. Here are a few things. Your family, for example. You didn't ask to be born in your family. But you can, you can make your family a part of your epigenetics. You know they say in these places on the blue zones, the households that keep the grandmas and the grandparents there, or the, the grandfathers and the grandmothers, they live longer because they have more sense of purpose, which is the last thing we're going to talk about. But families together, they eat at least one meal a day together. It's very important. The power of friends. You know, your friends will change when you're in school. Most of you guys that are watching, you're probably around 20 and 40. So you're probably developing friends at work. Do you know the number one satisfaction factor at work for people these days? If they have a best friend at work. <laughs> it's not money, it's not compensation, it's not holidays, it's not flexibility. The number one factor of satisfaction is, do you have a best friend at work? Who are the people that you work with? Now let me do something that wasn't planned. Look at this, look at this. <laughs> this wasn't planned. I'm gonna get this very careful. And this has turned into one of my best friends. Because this guy brings the best out of me. <laughs> and he is the guy behind the cameras that you guys don't see. That's Jordan, by the way. You need friends, the power of friends, the power of your circle, friends at work, family is important. And you need, to, you need to harness, you need to make sure you choose well your friends. They say you're the average of the five people you hang out the most. Now here's a question for you. Who are the people you're hanging out with? How are you spending your time with them? And very important, intentional and non-intentional fellowship time. So intentional fellowship time will be like, let's go do this, this is punctual. And then you go, let's go to the movies, let's go this. Or you incorporate something in your routine. Let's go to the gym together. Let's practice jujitsu together. Let's go for a bike ride together once a week. That's great. But what about the non-intentional? I know we live in Australia and I have the authority to talk about this because where I come from is different. Here in Australia, you have to schedule an appointment to go to people's house. That's disgusting. I'm sorry, but that's disgusting. You should be able to just knock on the door in your village, your compound. Do you know your neighbors? You know, there's how many of us will go through life without actually knowing your neighbor's name. Like today, my wife is actually baking a, baking a cake so she can introduce herself to the new neighbor. So you should be able to knock on the door and say, hey, come along, let's have dinner. So your circle, your network, your friends, it's really important. Family, close friends, distant friends, intentional and non-intentional. That's the third area. Now let's talk about what I love the most, the fourth one. You really need to pay attention to this one. I think this is the number one key for the people who live longer and happy. <laughs> Let's go. All right, this is the most exciting part of the four areas that you need to develop to build your own blue zone. This fourth part is, is something intrinsically good, like it's, it's deep, okay? So I'm gonna split this into two parts. Part number one, it's almost like a bridge. It's religion. You know, the word religion actually means reconnect. Religion is a good thing, all right? And in the blue zones, they have found that most of these people who live long, who live happy, they practice some sort of religion. Buddhism, Christianity, you know, the Seventh-day Adventists, they are big on the blue zones because they have a few practices embedded in their religion. Now, what I'm, trying to, what I'm trying to tell you is that being part of something that is greater than you, bigger than you, is actually a good thing. Most people find a sense of purpose in their religion. You know, it's hard enough to live a meaningful life if you don't serve anything that's greater than you. It's very selfish. So you can buy the cars, you can buy the house, you can go for all the vacation and the holiday trips that you want, but they're still empty. So religion is, at least for these people, one avenue, one outlet where they find their purpose. And in talking about purpose, <laughs> That's the, that's the main thing. You know, on the blue zones, like I said, there are nine different key areas. I split them into four. What you eat, how you move, your friend circle, and your sense of purpose. Now, purpose is the main thing. If you go back to Okinawa, the first region they found the people who lived the longest and happiest and actually healthy. Because what's the point of living 20 years more if, you, <laughs> if you're sick? There's no point. Now get this, did you know that the people who can articulate their sense of purpose, they actually live an average 
of 10 to 20 years longer than their peers. Now, I don't know about you, but I can do with 20 years more. You know, I can, I can, I can live fully for 20 years more if I'm healthy because I have a sense of purpose. You wake up in the morning and you know what you're about to do. You're not just going to work to pay the bills. You know what you do. Like they, they say that if you can articulate your sense of purpose, you actually make an average of $20,000 more than your peers. <laughs> nah, look, 10 years is good, but I can do with $20,000 more at the end of the year for sure. There's a bunch of things that are good about your purpose. Now, I'm gonna tell you how to not only find, but you live your purpose. All of these things that we have shared, how you eat, how you move, your friend circle, these are all part of this concept called Ikigai. Ikigai is a Japanese word that is formed by two words, purpose and life, the reason you wake up in the morning. That's the first thing that Dan Buettner found out when he went to Okinawa. He would ask these people around, why you do this? Why you do that? Why are you so happy? Why are you living that healthy? Why are you moving that way? And they all came back with the same word, Ikigai. And for us Westerners, the easiest way to unpack the concept of Ikigai is to split it into these four areas. You know, what you're good at, what you love doing, what pays well, and what the world needs. Specifically the last one, you know, what do you have to give that the world needs? We are all built, wired with something special. God didn't create you for nothing. He gave you a special gift, a special talent. You're unique. Your iris in your eyes, you're unique. Your fingerprint is unique. There has never been anyone like you and there will never be anyone like you. In millions of years to come, in millions or billions of years that have gone by, there has never been another one like you. You're unique. And because you're unique, I think your contribution is unique. It's extremely important for you to find who you are, find what you're good at, find how you can contribute to the world so we can turn into a better world together because of what you do and who you are. Now here's the deal. You don't have to move. You don't have to acquire any piece of equipment. You have everything you need right now to build your blue zone. I've just given you these tools. You can implement them right now. I'm looking forward to hear from you. What are the steps that you have implemented in your life? Maybe give me two. Two things that you're gonna do right now with your life to build your blue zone. And if you wanna know more about it, you can watch this video over here. I'm sure it's gonna help you. I'm out.